draw with me. I'm Danny Gregory, and today I have a special guest. My friend uh, Vanessa Brantley Newton is going to join me in a minute, um, which is very exciting and fun. Um, if you uh, are, this is your first time to draw with me. Welcome, and this is uh, this is basically an opportunity to just have fun and draw. It's not really a class. It's not necessarily even a demonstration. It's just an opportunity to have an appointment with yourself every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time to say, you know what, I'm going to sit down and draw for 30, 45 minutes and uh, just enjoy myself. It's not about creating masterpieces, although you might create one. We'll see. Um, but thank you all for joining me. There's all kinds of folks here, Lisa and Robert and Joshua and Chrissy and Thistle and on and on Daisy and Goethe and uh, Artie Dude and Diana and John Cromer. Hello all. Thank you again for being here with me today and with Vanessa. So Vanessa is a person who has been involved with Sketchbook School for several years. She is a fantastic illustrator. She is uh, a great um, singer as well, but she's, I think, to me, most above all, is just an incredible person of integrity, wisdom, and genuine joy. So it is really fun to have her uh, be part of our Sketchbook School family. And um, let me just get ready. Vanessa, are you ready to, to come on? Yes, I am. She is. All right, good. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, make sure that I can Okay, good. So um, without further ado, well, let me tell you a couple more things before I bring on Vanessa, just little housekeeping things. One is, if what you make today uh, is something that you'd like to share with me or with the other people in our, in our extended universe, use this, this uh, hashtag, hashtag SBS draw with me. Just put that on whatever drawing you make on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or if you're a member of our schoolyard, we would love to see what you make there too. So uh, that's that. Uh, one other thing, and this may sound a bit bizarre to you if it's if you're new to it, you can text me. You can text me at uh, 919-298-8117. Why on earth would you want to text me? Because if you do, I will send you drawings that I make. I will send you inspirational stuff I come across, things I recommend. And uh, you can also text me back and we can chat with each other. So write that number down, 919-298-8117. And one final thing, which is, I believe this is it? Yes. Okay, so and the final thing I wanted to just encourage you to do is to sign up for Danny's List. Danny's List is a weekly email essay that I write. It's about creative issues. It's about things that are part of our lives as artists. And every Friday, I send out an email thought essay, which people seem to like. Thousands of people get it every week. And you can get it, too, at sketchbookschool.com slash Danny's hyphen list. Go to there, sign up, and tomorrow I'll send you one. So make sure you have that in your repertoire. Okay? So that's, okay, that's enough um, enough stuff. Let's go on and, and see each other. Here we go. There's Vanessa. Hello. Um, hey, Danny. <laughs> so good to see you. Yeah, it's so nice to have you here, too. Um, let me just pop on as well. Good. So, Vanessa, um, how are you doing? How, how are you, how's your Thursday so far? My Thursday has been interesting, but it's been good. Yeah. It's been really, really good. Yes. That's excellent. Good. So, and how are you in general? I mean, uh, you know, you, like the rest of us, are experiencing the wonders of the pandemic. Um, how, how are you doing? Slide over a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. If you wouldn't, you're just getting, getting cut off a little bit off screen, Vanessa? Or maybe that's my fault. Let me, let me, let me make my other direction, actually. Uh, let me make myself smaller, actually. Uh, and, the, and therefore, there we okay. That's good. Now we can see we can see more of you and less of me. Good. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so tell me how 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 have the last six months been for you? I'm sure challenging, like they have been for the rest of us. They have been they have been definitely challenging. Um, to say uh, challenging is is really really um, an interesting word. 
frustrating. It's been depressing. It has been um, emotionally draining, um, to say the very least. Uh, discouraging in a lot of ways. And I've had the time. I'm sorry. What? Carry on. Yeah. And I've had to find other ways to kind of deal with it. You know, uh, besides food. Yeah. Why? What's wrong with eating huge amounts of food all the time like I do? Yeah, well, you can't, you can't it's food not healthy. everything. You can't you know? food everything. So, uh, it's, it's just trying to find my way around different things and um, trying to reframe it and uh, making art. Making art. I, you know, that's how I get through it. So, it, I mean, I've heard from some people that during the pandemic, they just have lost their mojo. They've lost their ability to make art. They just don't see the point there. But you haven't had that feeling. You haven't had that reaction. Um, I, you know, I was working on a children's book, and it's actually a book that I wrote uh, called Becoming Vanessa uh, with Random House and Penguin Books. And um, there were days when literally I could not pick up my pen to do anything and I was painting this book this was not a book that I did on uh, the computer this was um, uh, a collage book uh, all the work in real time and I painted the papers and made my own collage papers and uh, had to find different things to put in and so uh, just trying to like I said trying to keep it filled with joy and love and inspiration was hard it was very very hard in lieu of what was happening with george floyd um just african americans of all here in america was just overwhelming I'll bet. Over and so hard to paint just really you know as artists there are days when you just don't feel like putting paint anywhere you don't feel like drawing you just don't feel like making a mark i remember talking to you a few months ago and you at the time you were just like making papers you were just like painting background stuff you couldn't bring yourself to go much beyond that you i mean i guess you made a bunch of paper that you could then use for your collages once you fell up to it but exactly. <laughs> but you did but you did stay you did stay busy i guess so i guess that's something yeah yeah that was that was a thing um uh, when I would get depressed or when I would feel sad, uh, color can be such a therapeutic thing for people, really. Right. And um, slapping paint, instead of just trying to paint a picture, sometimes just slapping paint onto something, uh, paper, and just getting that energy out of you, that negative energy out of you, um, can be a very positive thing, can be a very powerful thing, can be a very cleansing thing. Right. And so it was for me, definitely doing that. Right. Okay, so um, Vanessa, I'm getting some people are asking if we can increase your audio. I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, it's, I've turned up as much as possible, but maybe if you just inch a little bit closer to the computer, but it's uh, it'll be fine. Okay, um, so y you are in you're in South Carolina, right? What, I'm in South Carolina. No, uh, yeah. Super. Her, her audio. Just tell me. My ambient sound is drowning her out. Okay. When she's talking, we can hear your ambient sound. I see. Okay. Um, sorry. Is this the infernal technology stuff? Um, yes. Um, okay. So, so, yes, you're in North Carolina, of course. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm in Charlotte. Yep. I know. Um, one of the fun things about doing this thing is, that we, is we get to juggle lots of different balls while trying to make this show. So please please be uh, um, patient with us here as we move along. Okay, so so Vanessa, one of the things that we talked about that we're gonna do today is we are going to do some drawing together. And um, why, we'll continue our conversation as we draw, shall we? Because it's always fun to do that. And we will talk um, about whatever, but we're gonna draw hairstyles. And hairstyle was your idea. So tell me why you thought of hairstyles as a thing that we should draw. This is so interesting, Danny, because, you know, uh, I'm hearing more people say, oh, I can't get out to the beauty parlor 
to get my hair done. I can't go to the barbershop. And it has really put us at odds with, you know, growing hair or dealing with, you know, our bald heads that need to be shaved or whatever. And I, as you all can see, I shaved my head completely the day I found out about COVID and um, how it was spread and all kinds of stuff. You know, I was like, you know what? I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to shave my head. And I completely <laughs> shaved my head. I mean, with with a, a clipper and then took my uh, husband's uh, shave razor and shaved it completely bald, wow. no hair. And then it started growing back and it was painful. <laughs> Very painful. But, I can't imagine uh, what that's like. See, I, I'm used to having long flowing locks and, uh, you know, I, I would never shave my head, but yes, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> it, it, it was, it was, you know, for me, and it's not for everybody. I understand that everybody can't do this. Um, for me, it hair is an accessory. Right. And, um, uh, especially after I lost my hair, I lo I had alopecia oh. and, um, I lost my hair. And so once I did, you know, I just like, you know, let's just go with it. Let's just shave it all off. And, um, I got so many compliments. Well, you, so do, many you do look, you do look, you do look striking always. And you usually have a mohawk. So that's also yes, striking. I but, yeah. um, and you often wear like, uh, sort of turbans and things like that, that are also really cool. Yeah. So. So, all right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start drawing hairstyles. We can draw any hairstyle we want to. That's going to be one of the fun things we're going to do. But for, um, you and I are both going to draw on the computer just because for the for sharing here today, it's going to be easier. You're going to draw on your laptop, on your on your actual, you're using Corel Paint, right? You're going to yes. draw on your, on your computer. I'm going to draw on my iPad. You guys out there can draw on it, whatever you want. Um, but we're going to try and draw a bunch of different hairstyles, right? So, so if you want to, you could draw a bunch of heads and then put hairstyles on them. But let's figure it out as we go. Um, and yeah, and Danny, my 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 um, uh, Corel has to come back on again. Right, I know. What happened? Yeah. So you, you know, we're doing this in real time, people. Yes. And things happen. So. Uh, all right. So all we're gonna we're gonna um, we are going to split the screen um, and I'm gonna go away. So I'm just gonna have my screen, actually let me get rid of it. Sorry guys, just, if you don't mind, while we're fooling around, get your get your sketchbooks out, get get your, your act together, get your, um, your sketchbooks, your whatever stuff you're gonna use and let us prepare. So you're, um, what we wanted, what we're hoping to do here is to be able to share what I'm drawing on my thing and what Vanessa is drawing on hers. So she's going to do, uh, she's going to share her computer screen. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Yes. So take the time to either get your art supplies together, comb your hair, shave your yeah. head, whatever <laughs> it is you're going to be doing. Um, true. And it's true. true. So uh, and. Vanessa, I'm also going to share, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just going to share my screen with you too, so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely. If it works. Yeah, so, yeah, so you'll be able to see. Absolutely. Can you see, can you see that now, Vanessa? Um, hold on. Let's see. I see. I see your screen. I All right, see your. Good. Yeah. good. Uh, so you can see my white screen. You can see my white blank white page. Yep. Uh huh. And so okay. So while we're waiting for you, I'm just going to draw a head. A head that's that's yes. waiting for uh, waiting for hair. So. So everybody else, you might want to just start uh, getting ready by by making your yourself a head. Yes. Get a head. And uh, I'm using Procreate because I'm sure you're going to wonder about that. And there's, oops. I love it. So, you know, this hair is so interesting to me, Danny. Um, how people comb their hair, what people do to their hair, what color they're going to 
do their hair in, what style. All those things are so interesting to me, and that's why I wanted to do this. Yeah, because your hair really changes how you appear. I mean, it can change your your personality just by Absolutely. and certainly coloring it, you know, uh, cutting it. Uh, it's, it can appear to say a lot about you. It doesn't necessarily actually say a lot about you, but it, it can appear to. It can it can definitely appear to. I mean, uh, uh, for me, it's so funny when I wear my mohawk, I literally get stopped so many times in the airport. It is it is hilarious. <laughs> You mean because people assume that you're a Mohawk Indian? Oh my goodness! They they look at me like, wow, that's a Mohawk. I mean, it's a high Mohawk. You know, it's it's not spiky or anything like that, but it's it's a big old wave. It's, there's definitely a wave. You can't miss me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Vanessa, worst comes to worst, if you can't do this, do you want to just like draw something and hold it up just in case? I would I, I, just in just in case we end up like with. Uh, tech problems that we can't deal with. Yeah, so, that's the wonderful thing. Tech problems don't win, y'all. It doesn't right, win. Exactly, exactly. So, so just in case Vanessa doesn't work. So, why, yeah, we can start drawing, and then worst comes to worse. Yeah you sure. will hold up something. So, all right, so um, I'm gonna draw different different hairstyles on this one creature and uh, we'll see how it works out. Yeah, so something something like this that is immediately looks the person, makes the person look not terribly intelligent. <laughs> but, uh, but sort of like the dumb and dumber kind of hairstyle. Um, but I'm just gonna give them different hairstyles and see how it works. So. This is sort of more of a goth kind of look. I like goth hair, That's, it's, it, it's cool to me, I love it. Yeah. And actually give this guy like a kind of more of a, a of like a mullet actually <laughs> there we go That's nice. uh, um, I, I remember those back in the day man i definitely remember those yeah party in the front what is a business in the front party in the back yeah that's, that's right <laughs> <laughs> yes daddy oh my goodness so uh, true all right so or then here's um Give him, I'll give him the, uh, the Vanessa. <laughs> or her, I guess it's a her, a person. It's a them. A bit of a widow's peak. Now, if you wanted to, you could also approach this, if you don't have an iPad and you wanna just, um, you know, just draw a bunch of heads. Maybe I'll do that to make it easier. That's so, a that's that's a definitely great way to do it. Yeah, so maybe I'll just do it that way. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start a new. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. I'm gonna start a new one. So for those of you playing along at home, you know, just whoops, let's just draw let's just draw some heads. Let's just draw a bunch of heads. And um, I want to try to share my screen now. Oh my gosh, it's gonna work. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's see. And uh, I love these heads, Danny. Awesome. All right, so let's just draw ourselves a bunch of heads. Yeah. So, can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Great. Can you make it full screen like we did before, remember? Okay. So Let's see if I can do that. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. Okay, now Painter wants to come back on too. Painter, we don't need you. You 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 didn't do right by us. Are you doing Photoshop now? Yeah, so I'm gonna start I'm gonna Photoshop. take one, one of my many people and uh I'm going to give him some eyes. 
the nose and mouth. And uh, let's, let's get some hair going. I'm just doing the same. I'm thinking I'm going to give her sort of a uh, like a flip hairstyle. Awesome. Things happen. And uh, things happen to our hair. <laughs> That's true. One of, one of the most interesting uh, things that happened to me, uh, I am uh, African-American, but I have Asian background as well. My mom, her, her father was uh, Cambodian and Japanese. No kidding. And yeah. And so uh, when it came to uh, my hair, my hair took on more of an Asian feel, but it was very um, thin, but it still had a kinkiness to it. And so it was very weird <laughs> trying to get my hair done because they didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what to do with it either. So it was, it was, it was not good. It, it was not good. And you hear most of uh, my Asian family constantly talk about how um, they can't get a curl in their hair. I mean, now you have perms and things like that, but it damages the hair so badly. And right. so um, uh, I went and had a perm. Wrong thing to do. That's how I ended up with alopecia. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What, the chemicals just like burnt your scalp, basically? Chemicals burnt my scalp, um, messed up the texture of the hair. It was just, a, like I said, a weird texture of hair. And um, I don't even want to say weird. It was strange. It, it was strange. And I didn't need to put chemicals in it, but I put chemicals in it to kind of get it to do what I needed it to do. And it, and it didn't work. I should have just left it the way that it was. So, but um, here I am. Um, doing a little bit of a, a little afro here. That looks that looks elegant, yes. But I think I'm going to take it to the next level and put a big braid here, and maybe we'll go on the front. Okay, she can see she's got a little Rapunzel situation going on here. Now, a lot of what you do when you come up, when you're doing children's books and stuff like that, is the characters, creating characters. Yes. I imagine, I imagine coming up with a hairstyle is, is, is a lot of defining that, that character. Right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, those are very, very interesting things to do, is to come up with hairdos for children. And because I've been around so many children, um, hairdos are not something hard for me to come up with. Um, they're, they're very, very easy for me to come up with because I watch them, you know, and so um, I really encourage artists um, to watch, watch your subjects, watch the people that you want to draw and put in your sketchbooks. Um, we can be very uh, discreet about it. We don't have to let everybody know that we're drawing them, but um, I, I, I collect children and I put them in my Be careful uh, who you say that to. I know, right? <laughs> but I put them in my sketchbook, and I, I, I just watch them. I watch them, you know? So uh, they give me inspiration, and I'm inspired by them. And um, I love the little wild hair dudes, and I love the children who have blue hair now, and, you know, a streak here or a streak there or whatever, or uh, big fluffy cornrows. Uh, that, that's my thing. I love that. Absolutely. Big, big fat ones. like uh, Big fat yeah. ones, yes. Right, right. I love plaits in little girls' hair. So, um, you know, however, I, I, I plan to work with it. But um, e even boys with long ponytails and locks or men with um, man buns and stuff like that, I love putting that in my uh, children's books. So, 
Yeah, and also um, stuff that you put into your hair too, like uh, ber barrettes and hair bands. Barrettes and hairdos, exactly. And this is what I'm going to do with this one right now. I'm actually going to um, maybe put some little ties in here to kind of give it some some color. I loved doing my daughter's hair, Zoe's hair, um, and filling it up with bows, and she couldn't stand it. Pulling she, it really tight, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, you know, she was blessed. She didn't get the hair abuse that I, I got. <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I once did a, a thing in my sketchbook where I drew every hairstyle I've ever had, starting with basically this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that hairstyle that I had when I was born yeah. you know all the way to like bad like hate uh, sort of high school hairdos 80s kind of new romantic hairstyles um, you know I had like an asymmetrical hair cut at one point really you did <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. god that was that was the 80s I have to I have to see these pictures I have to see these pictures <laughs> I got I got to see that Danny with the asymmetrical hair. Oh yeah, yeah, like uh, that, that must have been really hot. You know, those are the days. Those are the days. Uh, and then you'd also have yeah, and also in those days, like I used I used to blow dry my hair, which was like a thing that everybody did in those days too. You know, oh, wow. remember remember Saturday Night Fever when he's like, "Don't touch the hair, ma! Don't touch yeah. the hair!" Yeah, it's like that. Yes. Oh yeah. my god. Wow. What, what's the best hair do you've ever had that you loved? You're looking at it. No. Oh, I love it. It's not true, though. But yeah, I'll say that just to be, you know, to own it. Um, yeah, I mean, it used to, in looking back at it, it looks kind of ridiculous. But at the time, those kinds of hairstyles were a lot of fun. Oh. They, they were fun. I, I, I mean, um, Oh my goodness. As an African American woman, we do all kinds of things. We do weaves, you know, and now I'm finding that it's not just African American women who are doing weaves. Um, you know, um, men are getting hair transplants and yeah, yeah, ever and women are doing the same, you know, to uh to look good. You know, um hair can make us feel so much better about ourselves. Um, you know, everybody can't go around with the hairdo that I have. But um, I'm finding a lot more women, uh, black and white, um, and across the board, are opting to do this kind of hairdo. So it's, you know, it's basically what makes you feel good. It's true. I remember um, my first wife, Patty, had uh, like a, it was like a clip-on ponytail. Yeah. And it was like. It was really long. It was like almost down to her waist. And she would put that on sometimes. And it was the same color as her hair. Um, I also remember my mother having like, was it called a fall? fall? Oh, yeah. Fall. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I, um, we lived in, um, when I was a little girl, we lived in Newark, New Jersey. And it was around the time where Newark, um, New Jersey had a lot of different singers and, and, and musicians that would come through. And my mother uh, was a milliner. And so she made hats and different things like that for people. But um, I remember um, the first time I ever saw a man who was um, gay and uh, dressed like a woman. Like a, a, yeah, transvestite, yeah. right. Drag queen. So she was a transvestite, exactly. So it was the first time that I had ever gotten to see one. And my mother and him were very, very good friends. And his name was Tony. And Tony was about the most gorgeous woman I think I've ever seen in my whole entire life. <laughs> he had big boobs. He had this extremely long braid that went down the side of his body. And um, he was famous in Newark for doing everybody's wig. So when James Brown came in, um, James Brown you know, didn't wear wigs, but um, when James Brown needed something as an accessory, he would design the accessories for James Brown, or he would do something for a singer like Shirley Caesar, a gospel singer who would come in and different people. He would make these hairdos. And one day my aunt uh, came who was a model 
and she was going to be dressed as the black Marie Antoinette. <laughs> and I remember him doing this powdered wig for my aunt that was the most amazing hairdo I have ever seen in my whole entire life. It was it was fantastic. It was fantastic. I loved it. So here's my little, you know, hairdo. Wow. And 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 I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do another one now. I love that. I love those hair those bands. Those little bands on it. Yeah. yeah. Love it. And so uh, I'm going to do another. And I, I very rarely work in Photoshop, people. Um, I usually work in Corel or either um, on the iPad on Procreate, which I love. I love Procreate. How do you like it, Danny? You know, I love it so much. These, the, some of you may have seen the things that I have behind me on the wall because I finally figured out how to print from Procreate onto my really pretty inexpensive printer. I think my printer's like maybe $100, $150. Printers are so cheap now. Of course, they charge you for the ink, but um, I found that I can do a full bleed printout. So it becomes, um, you know, it, it goes to the edges of the paper and it looks really, really good. I think the quality, I, for a long time, I didn't, I hesitated to print from my iPad because I thought, it looks so good when you're looking at a sheet of glass with light coming through it. So the colors are really bright because they're basically light. But but then I found that when I started doing these prints, it was fine. It was good. It was good. Awesome. But you're doing them for your books probably when, you, when you're working on the computer, right? So it's, it's for reproduction. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm getting ready to do a new book now called Shake It Off. And um, it is um, a book uh, that basically, well, when I did my TED talk, I shared the open in, in the opener of the TED talk um, about a little goat that had a lot of problems. <laughs> I love the they, way you put that, but okay, yes, I, I remember yeah, that. Right? So, so some of you probably have seen it and heard it, but um, uh, they asked me to do a book on it, and so I'm going to do that whole book on my iPad. Uh -huh. And so I'm really looking forward to it. I l use a lot of Lisa Bardot brushes. Yeah, me too. And um, uh, Lisa and I are actually going to be doing something together. Really? Um, tell yeah, her so tell her how much I love her brushes. And, and I it, most certainly will. Yeah, I, I will. I'm buying them all the time. And this one that I'm using right now is one of hers, which is like, look, I mean, look at the, the range you get from this brush. It's so you great. You get such range. Um, I love Lisa's work. Lisa's um, brushes are amazing. Yeah, and so she, she also, she teaches great demos, you can see, I mean, great uh, little oh. lessons you can see on YouTube also. Lisa, B-A-R-B-A-R-D-O-T, like Bridget. Yeah. She's uh, 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 she's she's an amazing friend and um, uh, an, an amazing artist. I love her. We should get her to sketchbook school. Tell her, ask her if she wants to do something with us. Absolutely. Yeah, she's great. So we're going to go for blue hair on this one. And um, I want to be in a way. Yep, I certainly will ask her that because I know she would love to do that. She is just, um, fun, a fun person to be around, honestly. And so. And you know what I like to do sometimes too when I'm doing hair is to kind of fill in the shape. But I like I like marks. So some people go, why don't you just you know hit uh, fill and go ahead and fill it in? But um, I like marks. Right. The the, the organic tech. I mean, you can also I'm sure do great ones with the collage techniques that you use, right? So you can oh fill in fill in that shape. Collage hair is the best. It really is. Because I can, I can do it with anything I find. I can go to a magazine and get a magazine and 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 um, uh, cut out hair from a magazine, or do it with flowers or whatever grass if I wanted to. And so I love that. I love playing with that. I'm gonna do that actually. I'm gonna do that here. Because I have, 
I have a huge folder of textures. Oh yeah. Because I'm too lazy to do what you do, so I just go everywhere I go and I take pictures. So instead of making my own, I just take pictures of stuff that I think is cool. Like this is a picture of this is some shag, shagadelic, and, uh, and yep. then I can then use it as a as a clipping mask, and uh, boom. Now my my hair is is there. My hair is there. <laughs> and then um, you can just erase the parts that you don't want to have as hair. Do you, have, do, you, do you use the iPad in this way that I'm doing it now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes, there's so much I'm still learning about the iPad. and. Um, well, I have a course you could take. It's called Be an iPad Artist. It's, it's at Sketchbook School. And yes, and I do need to take that. I do. I have so many courses at Sketchbook School, and I have to tell you, I enjoy Sketchbook School. I really, really, really do. When I'm uh, just needing one of those days off where I just want to learn something, and, and that's the beauty of it, is learning other things. This is what keeps you sharp and keeps you ready for uh, jobs or just filling your notebook, um, is to constantly keep learning. I, I, you know, I, I don't believe in being stagnant or just concerned. We've got to stretch out and try other things. I think that's absolutely true. I think, I think, uh, you can get, you can get, uh, stagnant as you say. Um, yep. you can also get locked into a style. I think as an illustrator, you know, so often clients want a certain thing from you. I'm sure you experience this all the time. And then you're like, uh, but I don't really want to do it that way just because I drew that way once or. You know, I used to draw that way, but I don't draw that way anymore because now I like to draw in some other medium, you know? It's, it's, it's so true. And I, and I have more students that tell me, oh, how do you develop your style? You got to try other things. You got to try different things. Uh, I I am, I'll, I'll be 60 soon. I'll be Wait, 60 soon. Come on. Uh, really? No, I, I'll be 60 soon. And um, I was asked, how do you stay fresh? And it's, I'm always looking at different artists. I'm always looking at other um, ways to, to do art um, traditionally and uh, digitally, playing anything and everything. And I think that's what keeps me fresh is that I'm not just tied to one thing, you know? And I think when you, when you, when you do tie yourself down that way, you better be really, really, really good and doing something so fantastic that nobody else can um, copy or be open and try other things. You got it. So. It's also that's what makes it interesting. I mean, I think yep. once I think if you just have a way of doing it, then it just be. I mean, I've I've reached that point at various times in my drawing life where I'm like, uh, I just don't even want to do it anymore. It's just it's 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 more of the same, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, it's uh, especially for getting other art supplies. That that's the one reason why I try to do other things. I have uh, sketchbooks just filled up with Posca pens. They're my favorite. I love to use them all the time. Uh, then after using the Posca pen, there are something called Stabrillo uh, pencils, which are watercolor pencils, um, but you can use them as crayons as well. And I love using those as well. So I guess I'm always trying something different. Now that's so important and, and makes it, it's just an ongoing adventure. It's always fun. I'm just really loosely doing this hair here. I don't really want to make it um, uh, perfect, but kind of messy. And trying dextro, uh, 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 I, I will say too, especially if you're working on an iPad, uh, sometimes the work can look so digital. And the only way you can really um, break that up is to use um, pencils that have texture to them. Um, brushes that have texture will help out a great deal. Or introducing organic textures too. Yeah, definitely. Okay. What is your new book about? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. So the, uh, the new book that I'm doing called Becoming Vanessa that I just had to mail out <laughs> the day before yesterday to China because uh, nobody's in the publishing houses. Nobody's there. Really? So um, I had to mail it out. And um, it is a story I was sharing with Danny. When I was a little girl, um, I remember one of my teachers um, telling me that my name was too big for me. And uh, it was it was not nice. It was it was not a nice thing to be said. But um, uh, I remember going home and telling my mom and dad, why did you name me Vanessa? All the names you could have named me. Now, I love butterflies. And so I wanted butterflies on everything. When I saw butterflies outside, I wanted to play with them and everything. And um, uh, butterflies was just my thing in school. And I remember um, getting paper from my teacher and taking paint and throwing it in the middle of the page and then uh, smash it all together and folding up the page and then open it and go instant butterfly, you know, <laughs> and, you know, kind of, you know, oh, this kid right here, she's a piece of work. And um, I remember going home and crying to my mother and father. And I don't know why you named me Vanessa. Why you name me Amy or Mary or Sue or, you know, anything that was short that I could spell really quickly uh, because I'm dyslexic. And so um, I remember my mother, um, grabbed my face and looking me in the face and said, you know why we named you Vanessa? Vanessa means butterfly. And I was like, oh my goodness, my name means butterfly. That's what it means in Greek. And it changed everything for me. And, um, uh, you know, even studying even more about my name, finding out that my name meant metamorphosis and uh, uh, how I've changed and not changed, how I've transformed. You know, change implies you can go back and you can make it back, you know, what it was before. But transformation is something that you can never, you can never go back to that. It's different. It's, it's altogether different. And so um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I embrace my name now. And when I hear little girls who tell me my name is Vanessa, I love sharing that with them. So uh, I can't wait till this book comes out. That's such a great idea. Yeah. Empowering. Yes. Yes. And so here I did a, a she's probably a mermaid. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. She has blue lips and. I like the expression on her face too. <laughs> blue expressions. Uh, I mean, do you find that like you, sometimes when you're drawing that you are making up a person and then that, then that person is almost like has been born you know, like has a, has a life now. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, you know, um, I think it's very funny, uh, but um, I was sharing with some students that I talk to my characters and my characters talk back to me. And they're like, huh? I'm like, yeah, I talk to my characters all the time. My characters talk to me and tell me what they want to wear, um, how they want their hair done, whether they want freckles. Um, what color eyes they want, and I, I go with it. Mm -hmm. I, I go with it, and I let them tell me what their story is, and that's how I come up with my stories. So I have um, a, another book that's getting ready to come out, um, and this one is very near and dear to me uh, because uh, the character and how the character started talking to me. My father was a sharecropper, um, and there were times when he couldn't go to school. And he would tell me about how, uh, as a kid, uh, it was important that on the farm they kept seed in the farm or, on, in, or in, the, in the shed. And the seed was there just in case the harvest did not come through properly. And it was important that they had the seed. And even if they were hungry, they could eat the seed. And I thought that was so very, very interesting. And so um, I began to think about this character that I wanted to do and this little girl. And so the, this is how the story goes. The little girl is watching her brothers and her father and mother and grandmother outside harvest time. And they're collecting the harvest and it's been very, very good. And um, she's excited about it. And she goes outside and picks up some of the seed that's left over from the harvest. And her father tells her, we have to collect the seed 
and put some of the seed away for the next harvest, so uh, for the next planting, basically. And so um, they give her a little bit of the seed and she decides she's going to make a seed doll. So she makes this doll and fills it with the seed. Well, the next harvest comes and uh, it is rained out completely and they've lost everything. And they only have enough for food and they don't have anything to sell. So basically they've fallen on hard times. Mm -hmm. And the little reminds her father don't we have seed in the uh in the uh shed you to you know uh plant again and everything and you know or eat rather and her father shares with her no baby we can't use that and she waits they don't have anything to And she leaves the seed for her doll. She leaves the seed for her family mm -hmm. on the table. And uh, they then again have, well, first of all, you want to know what happens. The seed actually gets stolen. And so they don't have anything. And so that's why she leaves the seed on the, on the table for her doll. And they basically take that seed and they replant. And she even has um, her play in it where she actually goes outside and she helps them to plant. Now, what, what's interesting is this is a story where children get to find out that even as small as they are, they too can do great things. They can do great things. And so they get this harvest. The harvest comes in. They're so excited. They tell her, we're going to take you and buy you another doll. They take her to the city. She buys this doll. It's a porcelain doll. It doesn't feel like her other doll. And so she makes, again, another seed doll. And so that's the story. So I'm looking forward to, to this one coming out, not this year, but the following year, next year. That's such a great story. So are you basically, do you, are you writing all your own stories now? You're not illustrating I'm other writing people's stories? I'm writing my own books now, yep. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. You have so many stories. You've had such an interesting right. life. Yeah. Yeah. So I, think, I am finished with she. I think she is finished. Well, good. Well, I think we can wrap it up just because, okay. because I have to go and get a haircut. <laughs> well, good luck with your haircut. <laughs> It was so awesome to be here with everyone. Awesome. Can you unshare now for a second? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Vanessa, your sound was cutting out one time, but uh, at one point, but um, I think we are. Yeah, you're still sharing your screen. Okay. There we go. Stop. There you are. There you're back. And let me unshare my thing. There you are. And there we are. Okay, good. We're both back. So, yeah, my, my, uh, that was really fun. It was fun. I, I found that after a while, I really wasn't making any decisions and things were just kind of happening. Like, yeah. Like people were appearing and they were having haircuts and hairstyles and it was just sort of like, whoa, okay. That was, it's fantastic. It's so much fun. It really is. It really is. Well, Vanessa, um, I, we, I look forward to seeing your, book when it comes back from China. Hopefully yeah, that will be soon. looking forward to you having and, it. And I know you have a lot of other exciting things on the horizon that we can't talk yeah. about yet, but but hopefully we will know soon. And we will always come back and say, yeah. remember Vanessa Brantley Newton was on draw with me and they did hairstyles? And everyone yeah. will say like, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, it's lovely to see you. It's really fun to draw with you. Yeah. We have to do it again some more. Maybe yes, we'll, maybe we'll do it. Yes, and uh, we'll think of some other things. And meanwhile, send me your two, send me your two images because I'm going to share them, or you can put them up on the schoolyard, and um, I, and I'm, I'll put up my. I, I created a dozen. I have a dozen right. hairstyles that I made, so I'll take them to my barber and see what he can do with them. <laughs> awesome, Danny. Okay. It was so good being here with all of you. Have a good one. Thank you so much, Vanessa. You're welcome. Okay. Bye, everybody.